All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this event today, uh, this joint event with uh, Cheap Joe's and Liquitex. Um, Terry just mentioned that I uh, said that I was the star of this. I'll try to live up to that as much as I can. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, and uh, my name is Jimmy Leslie. I'm a painter. Uh, I've been a painter for a long time. Uh, I've been working uh, as the resident artist and director of education for Liquitex and its sister brand, Windsor & Newton, for about 14 years. And uh, as Terry said prior to that, I was a college art professor, so I taught painting, drawing, art history, and a bunch of other courses, pretty much anything they, they would uh, throw my way, and that was including color theory and so many other things as well. So I always uh, refer to myself as an artist educator. I am a painter in my studio. I'm in New Jersey right now. Uh, that's where my studio is located. So this is a uh, old converted uh, garage uh, behind my house. And our offices for Liquitex and its sister company, Windsor & Newton, are also in New Jersey. So about 45 minutes north of where I am. So I kind of um, move back and forth between those two locations. So I'm super happy to come to you guys today from my studio. This is where I, where I work. This is what I do, right? And, you know, when I say my studio... It is my dedicated studio space, but uh, you know, your studio might be a basement, it might be your dining room table or anywhere else that you can find a place to, to sling some paint around. Uh, I want this to be interactive. Now, obviously we're not together. Love to have you guys all in my studio, but we're not together. But use the chat feature and Terry will let me know when a, a question comes up. Uh, unless I see it first, I'll try to get right to it. But he'll let me know. And, and again, Terry, you can interrupt me at any point um, because I want to hear from you. Now, today, we're going to be talking about a few things. We're going to be talking about Liquitex Recycled Canvas. It's a really exciting product I love a lot. Uh, I, I love Recycled Canvas because it's made from recycled plastic bottles. And I want to show you something before I show you that. It's too warm in my studio right now. But this sweater I have, it's a super warm sweater. This sweater that I have is made from recycled bottles as well, recy recycled plastic bottles. So I love it when I can find a product like this super warm sweater here. And I know that I'm doing something for the environment as well. I know that I'm doing something that's more sustainable. So we'll get into what that means a little bit. But I'm also going to be painting for you today, and I'm going to be using Liquitex heavy body colors. So last thing before I get started, I want you to ask questions about the canvas, if you have questions about that that I don't get to, uh, although I'm going to give you a lot of information. I want you to ask questions about the heavy body colors uh, and uh, the, the materials that I'm using. I also want you to ask questions about process as well. I'm going to be painting for you, and you might have a question. I'm like, Gee, why'd you do that, Jimmy? What, what was that all about? Well, I, I want to... I want to try to figure out how to do that in my own paintings, or maybe I want to try to figure out how to not do that. So ask me your questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to my overhead view uh, first, and I want to share with you one other thing. If you are on uh, Instagram, if you're on social media on Instagram, Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. That's where you're going to find Cheap Joe's, all sorts of things that are happening with them, whether that be uh, deals on products, whether that be events like this one, that's where you can find it. Products we're using today are Liquitex. So you can find Liquitex at Liquitex Official. And, and Terry, maybe you can drop these in the chat as well. And then uh, aside from painting for you today, I am going to show you some finished uh, other paintings that relate to what I'm doing. So you can find more of my work at Jimmy Leslie Art. So Jimmy, L-E-S-L-I-E Art. And I have a lot of sketchbook studies, uh, finished paintings, and all sorts of stuff there. But let's get right down to it. I'm going to tell you about this canvas because it is super, super cool. Um, just a few things, but but then I want to get color down. And once I get color down, as, as each stage dries, I'll share more about the canvas. Now, if I take this, the, the plastic's already off of this. Now, the, now the, the canvas is white, of course, right? I have toned it this magenta ground that you see right here. And I have, uh, I've sketched out some rough shapes and I'll show you what those are based on in a minute. It's gonna be a landscape that I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna raise this up a little bit more. This is a nine by 12 inch canvas. And if we look at the label here, this is the Liquitex Recycled Canvas label. I love this. It tells us it's made with three bottles. I really, really like that. I like things. I'm a factual guy. I'm a science-based guy, even though I'm an artist. I love, I love facts. I love hard things that I can really uh, grab onto. So I think it's really fun that this is made by that. And I'll explain a little bit more about that 
uh, and a little bit more about Waste Aware as we get into it. But that's the company that actually weaves these fine threads of these plastic bottles into a canvas, into a cotton, or not a cotton, but into a canvas that we can use. Uh, so that's Waste Aware. And on our website at liquitex.com, you can find more about that journey. Again, some of which I'll be explaining today uh, with liquitex.com slash sustain and what that's all about and what we've done to get into this canvas and uh, get into this whole arena of working in a sustainable way. But let's get some color down first and then I can get back into the canvas. So when I look at this, um, I've got this magenta ground down and you might wonder why, why is that? Why did I put a color down on my canvas? Uh, I'm going to tell you this, uh, and I'm going to be super honest with you. I did that because it does a lot of work for me. That, that, oh, yeah, Pardon me. For some reason, there was a there was an audio issue, but we're good now. So what would happen uh, is when I'm painting on a surface and I have a white canvas down, that's fine. But if I miss any little places, that white canvas just glares. It jumps out as you as unfinished. So I try to think about colors that will do one of two things for me. The base color that I put down might inform or relate to colors that I'm gonna put down on top of it. Uh, so for instance, if I'm painting a, a, a dark night scene, I might start with a very dark violet uh, that will look like the darkness that I'm trying to, to, to paint, that I'm trying to uh, create. The other thing I might do is put down a color that will jar and contrast and do some interesting things uh, with my surface. And that's what I'm doing today. So I'm gonna show you the little sketch that I have here. And this is the little image that I'm gonna recreate. So this is a little image in my sketchbook. This is a place called Pumpkin Hollow Road uh, up in upstate New York. And uh, it was this kind of beautiful meadow that I saw. I really liked this. Uh, I'll take a lot of reference photos as I travel. And I also have the reference photo itself. And I'm gonna show you that. Now, a lot of times I will have a reference photo that I'll print out. The reason I didn't print it out today is because I like the fact that I can really zoom in on areas. Look at how yellow that field is right there. I'm really thinking about that as a yellow green as opposed to this very muted, muted bluish green in the background right there. So I like that I can kind of scale in and scale out. And one of the things I might suggest to you, this is where I like technology a little bit. If you have a reference photo that you're gonna paint and you have it on a computer, one of the things you can do is again, zoom in and out to see little details. That can be, that can be quite nice. Um, but the other thing that I like to do is sometimes you can take a, a photo in an editing software and you can pixelate it. And when you pixelate that image, what'll happen is in places where you might have simply looked at a shadow and said, it just, it just, it just, sorry, we're getting a weird feedback thing there. I don't know why that is when I, when I change. Your computer. Yeah, no, it's, it's on mute, but for some reason when I changed views, it, it did that. Well, okay. well, hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, so one of the things you can do when you pixelate an image like that, you'll notice little little qualities of colors in there that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise in the original photograph. So that can be a nice way, uh, a nice way to look at that and see colors where it might be a little bit harder to see them, uh, generally speaking. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you my colors here. We're gonna lay out our palette. These three colors that I have right here are yellow, medium, azo. So yellow medium azo is, is a yellow that I'm gonna use, one of the yellows I'm gonna use. I'm going to use phthalo cyanine blue red shade. Now I wanna, I wanna just show you these two before we put out the colors, these two tubes. Um, this is what you would find in a Cheap Joe's store or online. Uh, this is what the tube looks like. This is an older tube. Color's still the same, but we've changed the tube to make it uh, easier to read certain things on the tube. Uh, but I'm obviously gonna use the paint, it's perfectly good. And on the current tube, there's some information that we put on the front that's important. So this'll tell you your series number. So this is a series two. So when you see a series one, that's gonna be your least expensive paint. If you see a series two or three, that's gonna be a bit more expensive. And that might relate to the pigment. It might relate to the uh, production that goes into making it. And then you'll see this little box right here. 
Uh, a little box like that is telling you that this is a transparent color. So if I contrast that with light phthalo cyanine green, when you see this uh, filled in box right here, that's telling you that's an opaque color right there. And you can see this is a series one. And if we get a little closer, you'll see this little sun icon right here and right here. And it's got a Roman numeral one in there. That means that in a hundred years, if you're hanging your painting in a place where uh, you know it's inside in, in climate control, uh, control uh, conditions and UV light isn't on it all day long, like a, like a mural, uh, you're not gonna see a change in a hundred years. Uh, and then we also have the AP symbol. That means it's an approved product by the Arts and Creative Materials Institute, meaning that if you use it how it's supposed to be used, which is for painting uh, and not for eating. Uh, it's not, not gonna pose any threat to you. So I'm gonna put out those first three colors, yellow, medium, azo. I'm gonna put out more color than maybe you might be putting out because I have this paint here and I can use it and I'm not, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about uh, wasting anything. I'm gonna put out my phthalo blue as well. And the reason I showed you these three colors first, yellow, medium, azo, Phthalo blue and quinacridone crimson, uh, those are what we call our suggested primary colors. So as I always say in any demo, uh, any red, yellow, and blue is a primary color, but these are the ones we suggest to create your secondary colors. So your orange and your violet together and your green that are gonna be really clean, bright mixes, really bold mixes that are strong. Um, I'm gonna use a titanium white uh, to tint things, and I'll put that down here in this corner. What I might also use, I'm not gonna put it out right now, but what I might also use, and this is something I wanna share with you, uh, transparent mixing white. Transparent mixing white, so titanium white that I just put on the palette is a very, very strong opaque white that's gonna cool down your colors quite a bit. And, it, and as I said, very opaque. Transparent mixing white has the ability to tint your colors, but not knock the saturation down too much. So if you're someone who tends to get a little heavy handed with, with your uh, white and you notice your colors get very, very pastel very quick, uh, transparent mixing white can be nice. I'm also going to use this. This is one of the newest colors in the uh, Liquitex heavy body range. It's light phthalo cyanine green. I'm gonna put that over here. It's a very pale green and I like that. I'm gonna mix that with some of that yellow. I'm gonna mix that with some of that blue uh, and we're gonna have a little fun with that. Using it to tint color. And this one also kind of in the same family, this is a light bismuth yellow. And uh, Marilyn Jonas is saying, can I list those, base, uh, those colors again, those suggested primary colors? I, I can, and maybe we can put those in the chat, Terry. That's yellow, medium, azo. We've got phthalo blue or phthalo cyanine blue, also known as phthalo blue red shade. And then we've got uh, quinacridone crimson, quinacridone crimson. And I'll go over some more of these colors as we, as we continue to talk. The other two colors I'm gonna put out, I'm gonna put out a cerulean blue, cerulean blue. That's a very opaque blue. Um, you know, kind of what you'd call a sky blue when you mix that with a little white. Now, obviously, sky blue is a little bit of an, uh, uh, you know, a, a misnomer. It could be uh, any different shade of blue, but we all kind of have a, an idea in our head when we talk about that. And I'm going to put out cadmium free orange. Now, you might not see, you know, certainly in my study or the photo that I'm going to be working from, you might not see orange in there, but I'm going to use orange to, to, uh, to kind of uh, get some shades of colors and make some darker greens. That, that orange, we'll, we'll see how that mixes and how that plays out. So I'm gonna put that down. And again, uh, questions, put them in the chat. Terry will let me know any other questions. Of course, I saw, I saw Marilyn's question right there. So we're gonna move this over a little bit. And uh, the first thing I wanna show you here is I've got this pencil drawing down here. Doesn't look like much, does it? Now remember, again, it's based on our photo here. So when we look at this photo, I know there's a little glare there because of this screen, but when we look at that photo here, I'm looking at these big masses and big shapes of uh, foliage of things like that. Uh, I'm looking really, I'm, I'm thinking about big ideas first though. I'm thinking about this curving line of the landscape because I like how this bright, bright green 
contrast to what's down here. I see that as my brightest green in the mix. Uh, even though it's a, it's a bit bright down here, I see that, that as my brightest area. So I want to really make note of that. I see my lightest area, uh, even though there's going to be variation in the sky, I see my lightest area as the sky. So when you squint your eyes right now and you look at my reference photo, you'll really see the sky as being the lightest area of the whole thing and everything else is dark in comparison to that even though this is quite bright even though that's quite quite light it's still darker than what's up here so i'm looking at those big forms and when i look at them i'm just really thinking about big big concepts so let's get a little paint on the brush so you can see the pencil drawing a little bit in sharper focus so i'm going to take a little bit of the uh and I've got my apron on here and it's good because I just stuck my finger in the white. You cannot paint and uh, and not get a bit messy. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of that yellow medium azo. Now I wouldn't normally do this if I was just working in my studio. I'm doing this here um, just so that I can help you see my drawing a little bit more that I have here uh, and make sense of it. So we've got that hill in here and then we come in here and we've got this big rough shape of a mass here. So if we look at my little sketchbook study, I've got that big mass there, that hill that's coming across here. Kind of come up like that. We've got this other shrub form here. Down here in the bottom, this is where I've got a lot of foliage that's kind of kicking up it's a lot of like like reedy grass and things like that so just get an idea of where that is and i keep this very very loose my my philosophy i hate to say philosophy and philosophy sounds like a big kind of highfalutin word but my philosophy if i have one about starting a painting and i'm just going to clean off my brush over here i've just got a little plastic cup um, I bet you if you go on the Cheap Joe's website, maybe Terry can put something in there. You probably have some fancier things than that that might be really, really great. But I have this little uh, cup and I've got this little little thing in the bottom of it. It's just kind of a, uh, you know, it, it sticks in there and I can brush off my, uh, my, my brush on that. What I want to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to take some of that titanium white over here and a little bit of that cerulean blue. And actually, this is kind of cool what just happened. I, I, as, as I grabbed that blue, I, my palette knife just nicked that, that quinacridone crimson. So I'm fine with that. Look, it gives it the slightest, slightest little violet tinge to it. And I kind of like that because I, I did that in my little study here where I got a little bit more sort of grayish violet in this little gouache study. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna grab my brush, and I want you to listen to that. I'm really scrubbing on this canvas and just really getting a big notion of what's happening with that sky. And I'm gonna take my brush and get a little bit more of that cerulean blue in there, just a bit more. Yeah, so that's a little darker up top. So I'm pretty loose with that right now. And that's helping me get that sense of my edge there to that bit of foliage, to that little hill in the background. And then we can come back in here. I'm gonna take a little bit of that with the same color here, that cerulean blue and a little white. I'm gonna put that over there. And I'm gonna come back in with my light bismuth yellow. Just add a touch of that, not too much, maybe a little bit more of the cerulean blue because I'm looking at that that hill in the distance. And I just want to get, I want to get that in. I go a little bit darker with that. So I'll go back and forth. A lot of times I'm going to work very, very quickly today. Now I work pretty quick when I paint anyway, but I'm going to work quicker for you guys. Cause I have a, I have a, I have a time crunch, right? When I'm here in my studio, I can, you know, work at any pace I want. Um, but I do tend to, tend to work a little bit uh, more quickly than, than maybe a lot of people might. And the reason I do is because I don't want to overthink things. When I'm doing this right now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix up that brightest yellow. So I want, that, I want that bright, bright yellow of my study right there. So I'm going to clean off my palette knife. And when I'm working quick, I said that 
I end up not overthinking. Sometimes over the years, I have met students when I've been teaching and they get frustrated at what they're doing, really frustrated. And they say, they say to me, ah, I'm such a perfectionist. You know, you, you've probably heard people say that. Maybe you've said that yourself. I'm such a perfectionist. And you get frustrated that you're not getting things to happen in the way that you hoped they would happen. And, you know, my response to that, my response to that is maybe you need to reframe how you're thinking about what you're doing. You know, the idea of perfection to me, I actually come in the studio with the idea that I'm not even going to make a painting. Now, that might seem a little weird to you, right? Like that, that might seem like an odd, con what do you mean you're going to come into the studio with the idea that you're not making a painting? Well, for me, when I start to have that idea that I'm making art, right? Because I'm coming into my studio, I'm coming into an art making place. It kind of puts a lot of pressure on me. I feel, you know, pressure is not always a bad thing, but it, it can tend to put a little too much pressure. And what I'm doing right now, I'm taking some of that cerulean blue and I'm taking a little bit of that white that I had mixed in there and a little bit of uh, a little bit of the uh, azo yellow. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of this light phthalo green. The reason I'm doing that, I'm getting this very, very soft blue green tone there. It's almost got a, gee, it's almost got like a uh, turquoise type feel to it there, like a deep, deep turquoise, not quite as blue. And I'm going to take that. Usually a lot of times what I do when I have my, when I have color on my knife, I might actually just bring it right onto the canvas. And then I can start to move around with my brush. And I can start to block in areas more. So I'm being really loose right now. And the idea of working quickly means I don't overthink, right? And the idea of coming into my studio and saying to myself, I'm not worrying about making a painting. I'm worrying about making shapes. So when we look at this right now, we can see almost half of the canvas covered. And it's just a big shape. I can always get down to more details. But one of the things that I want to I wanna say this to you sort of face to face to make a point here is that a lot of times what happens is I would notice when I was teaching in a college course, I would notice a student who had their painting and they're working on the easel and they would do this. They'd be this close to it. You've seen that. I, I, I don't mean to point you out, uh, Lavina, if I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, but you had a smile there on your face, right? We've done that. I, I've done that, right? You, you get so caught up in this little thing and we make it. And that little thing you're working on might, you might look at that and go, that's really great. Now you step back and you say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I wasn't looking at that thing in relation to everything else I was doing. It doesn't work that good. It's too big. It's too small. It's too bright. It's too. So I try to keep this. Let's go back to our overhead view. I try to keep it very, very simple. And I always use the analogy of you know, building a house. I, I, I've yet to find a better analogy because when you build a house, what you're doing is starting with a big basic framework and then you're getting down to the details. Then you're getting down to those other, other little things that are taking place. So let's just get a little bit of that hill in here. Now, I am really pushing on this canvas. Um, one of the first things before I get into other details about the recycled canvas and the fact that it's made from plastic bottles. I was one of the first people uh, to test it. I love what I get to do in my job, uh, and that is test new materials uh, for the brand. And I'm gonna clean off my, my brush here. I wanna get a little bit more, I wanna break up my, my greens here, right? I don't want all my greens to be exactly the same. So I'm gonna mix up a violet over here, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a minute clean off my palette knife. Um, I'm kind of rough when I work on the surface of my paintings. I'm gonna take a little phthalo blue. I wanna show you phthalo blue with quinacridone crimson. Mix those two together. There's a little bit of white there already. Let me go a little bit more blue. And look at that, that's a beautiful violet. Yeah, let's bring that up a little closer so you can see. 
that's a really nice deep rich violet now i could push that more with the quinacridone if i want it to be more of a red violet i can push it with the thalo if i want it to be more of a of a blue violet but i'm going to leave that there right now and what i'm going to do while i have some uh this on my brush i'm going to go like this right here i'm going to put it right here just spread it on there and when i first started testing this canvas I was working with a palette knife and a brush, just like I'm doing now. And I was really trying to beat it up. I, I was working much more rough than I normally do. And again, I, I'm a pretty rough painter. Um, the reason I was doing that is because it, it's, a, it's, well, it's twofold. First of all, it's my job to test these things when we, when we have a new product, when we're in a, a testing phase. I also... I'm a person who handles some of the issues that we have. Sometimes if there's an issue with a product, I'm the person who provides the answers to what that issue, uh, issue is. So if I can be really rough on something and really test this thing by pushing on it and doing that, and it holds up, then I have less of an issue later on. You know, I have less people saying there's a problem and we have to figure out what that is. I, I have less troubleshooting to do. So I'm just getting this down. And if I go back to my reference photo, I want to show you this again. I'll keep going back and forth. I want to show you that what you will not see here is a violet. Like, I know you don't see that. And we can take liberties when we paint all we want. But I'm not being, I'm not being silly with this by putting the violet down. What I'm doing is noticing that this is a really, really dark, dark passage across here. So I'm going to let that that violet sit there and dry and I can work with other variations of green on top of it and little bits of that violet might poke through and that could be quite pretty that could be like an unexpected interesting thing that might start to happen there so when I'm when I'm in the testing phase of working on this uh, canvas and we're going to come over here and we're going to mix up our last section down here and then we'll get into more details um, when I'm working on the canvas and pushing it, that was my first test is let's just make sure that it holds up like a normal uh, cotton canvas. And I, I was happy to say that it that it did. That was very important to me. And I'm just putting some of this. Got some of this cerulean blue with a little bit of the uh, cerulean blue with the light phthalo green. And again, this is just gonna kind of serve to be a base down here. So, you know, when, when we're looking at this right now, it's like, what's, what's happening with my painting? It's me trying to get everything down on the canvas quickly. And here's what I notice about it as well. The little bits of magenta are showing through, right? Little bit, now I'm gonna cover up these areas, but I like when little moments, let me show you another example of that. This is a recent painting as well. You can see also the same magenta. This is actually Liquitex medium magenta. Um, and I put this down and I made this painting based on a trip to Italy to this beautiful fishing village called Camogli that I was in with my wife in, uh, back in April. And when we look at this, notice as I get closer, the pink, there's areas I was talking about when I first started saying, why do I put a color down? The little edge around there is not even painted. These little bits are not even painted. And I liked that the magenta made this feel sort of hot. With the yellow on top, I'm getting very, very opaque in areas, but a little bit of that magenta is just poking its way through. So it's giving variation to the sand. It's it's making sure that things are very, very warm, that you feel the heat. I want to feel that. And even around the edge of the bodies, you see a little bit of that magenta just kind of creeping through there and making its way in. Some of it making its way in, in the shadows of that person. So I would play with that kind of concept of working on different toned grounds and see what happens. But that's kind of a kind of fun way where it helps to serve to build the heat that's taking place in this. Okay, so. As we're doing this, let's let's uh, let's assess things. I'm going to clean off my palette knife. Um, I look at all this right now, and I want to get much more opaque with what's happening up here. Uh, so I think I, I I will carve out the space a little bit more. Uh, I when I paint, I'm thinking about a lot of times people will think about doing a drawing, 
and then filling in the shapes. I'm not really doing that. I'm obliterating the drawing. And what I'm really looking at, if I, if I focus up here for a minute, is that there is no line, right? There is, we, we know that, right? If we're looking at a grouping of, of trees, foliage, there's no line. We make a line. I, I started with a little pen drawing that you can see here and then, and then put some gouache on there. And then I went back in with pen again, but it's really the sky against here. And we perceive that edge as being some sort of line. So I, I can carve out my space here as I do that. So let's let's mix up a little color and uh, and do that. Now, if you go to the, the Liquitex website and Terry, you can put in the chat. I, I don't know, um, I you know, we, we provide a lot of information as a brand to uh, Cheap Joe's about our products. Um, and I, I haven't been on the Cheap Joe's site in a little while. So I don't know 100%, um, you know, I know obviously the canvas is up there, um, but I don't know how much other information is up there at the moment. But if you go to the Liquitex website, what you'll see is you can look for that little sustain mark. And that that's that's a, a, a what we call a positive mark for our future. So when we're making new products, we're always trying to think about sustainability as a as a as a starting point, aside from quality. Right. And we we want to make sure that if we're making a recycled canvas, it's got to work like the cotton canvas that you that you would traditionally work on. And if you find the bonus that I like I do and, and like so many people these days of trying to do less with virgin plastic, trying to use more recycled materials, um, you'll you'll read more information about what we're doing. And thank you so much for that, Kyle. Uh, really awesome colleague of mine uh, put a little link to the sustain right there so you can learn more about that after the fact. So let's go back to our sky here and let's mix up a bit more of that. And again, I, I love to hear your questions. I have information I wanna share with you, but I love to hear what your questions are. So um, again, Terry, if you've got some of those coming in there, you you know, feel free to interrupt me at any point. It does not, uh, I, I, I really enjoy getting into that. So again, I'm mixing a color on my palette knife and I'm gonna put it right up here. And you know what I'm gonna do here? I'm actually going to take a little bit of this light light phthalo green here. And you might go green, what, what, are you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing there, Jimmy? Why green in the sky? It's just gonna make that a little bit more teal. Yeah, it's just gonna change it. If, if I put it next to that first mark there, notice that it's just a little bit more teal than I had up there. And I like that variation because I don't want the sky to be just a flat block of color. So I'll play with variations. Now, squint your eyes as I hold that up really close. If you squint your eyes and you look at both of those marks right there, one is not necessarily darker as the, as the other. One's a little bit more blue. One's a little bit more green, but they they fit within the same value range. So, so there's not going to be a problem there if I start to blend those two things together. So if I come back in with my brush and I start to move some of that blue around and I bring it down into that green and then I kind of trail that down a little bit, I'm getting a little bit more opaque. Some of the pink's still showing through in little bits. But I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to dip right into that, right into that cerulean again and just kind of blend that a little bit. I'm going to be really loose with it though. I'm not, I'm not worrying about finishing the sky. I'm just trying to get more variation. And at the same time, I'm going to come back again with a bit more of that light phthalo green even a little bit more. So it's just gonna give me a little bit of variation. So let's bring that up close to you again. See that I'm just getting a little, little bit of variation. Yeah, that's nice, I can, you can see that. Getting a little bit of variation right there, just from the blue to the green there. And it's not enough that the green is jarring. It's not enough that it's disturbing to the eye. Now, if you do go on uh, the Cheap Joe's site, I'm just gonna go with a little bit of white. I'm gonna lighten this mixture a little bit more to come down here. So we're gonna get transitions, kind of kind of rough edges. But if you go on the Cheap Joe site, um, what you'll see is there are uh, 40 different uh, stretch canvases. There's a bunch of different sizes. I'm using a traditional depth right now, but 
you can also see this is what it would look like with your deep edge right there. So that's about, I think that's about two and a quarter inches or so. So I, I like that sometimes because you can paint the edge. You don't even have to worry about framing something. It's quite nice. And let's just show you the edge comparison there between, right, your standard traditional here that we're painting on. And then that wide, that wide mark right there. And then when we look at this, this also a nine by 12. So even though it's thicker, your surface area is still the same. So we're using three plastic bottles with that as well. Um, so taking those recycled plastic bottles and waste aware um, that that site that Kyle put up there. And I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to take a little bit of this mixture that I have over here, the blue green. Remember, that was a little bit of um, cerulean blue and it was some of our late uh, light phthalo green. I'm going to mix that in with some of that green that I made for the hill, for that hill right here. I'm just going to put that on here like that. I'm going to, I can come back in with the brush here, make sure my brush is cleaned off from the sky because I don't want to lighten that too much. I'm actually going to pick up a little bit more of the azo yellow. Azo yellow is strong. Yeah. Just change that. We're, we're, we're lights hitting that up here a little bit more. And then I can... So now I'm just starting to get variation. So once I have, once I have a big shape, I start to see where can I find variation. So again, if we look at this here, right, we're starting to get a sense of change from the top down to here in the sky. So down to our horizon line, kind of like the little bit of, you know, some of that's going to get covered, but I, I like a little bit of that magenta showing up. The, you know what I like about it is because if it weren't already on the ground of, of the canvas, I probably wouldn't think to actually put it there. So I like playing around with that. And, and I'll show you another one here. Here is a recent painting um, also on the recycled canvas. This was with the uh, cadmium uh, free orange color that we have down here in the corner of our palette. So I have that and you see little, just little bits of that are showing through through the trees here. So this this was actually in the same area of, of where this landscape was. Um, this was a little place called um, uh, Lake Copake. And I just like the road going through there. And this was painted with a palette knife. So I'm getting really thick, really juicy with the color. You can see that I'm really putting it on there. Now that, that might not be your aesthetic and that's fine, right? You have to, you have to figure out what you do and aesthetics change over time as well. So this was, this was only painted about two weeks ago and I'm going to reach, pardon me, as I step off to the side here, I'm going to grab off my studio wall. Here's a painting. Look at the difference in my style from 1995, right there. Wow, wow, that, gosh, I can't believe that was that long ago. 1995 to here. Um, 1995 was two years after graduate school when I was studying at the New York Academy of Art. And I was studying in a very academic manner. So I wanted to get those boots as shiny as possible. I wanted this thin layer of paint. I, you know, I just wanted that thing to glow like crazy. And that's fine. Um, but I found after a while, it didn't give me the joy and the lushness that doing something like this did. This is juicy. And I just, I don't dislike this one. Um, I, I'm still quite happy with it, but I, I enjoy the process of, of this one right here more than I enjoy doing this and all the little delicate things that are happening with the, the thread around the sole and all, oh, all the tiny little, they're, they're kind of tiny picky little things. Um, so I enjoy this. That's again, not a bad thing. You you should do what you do and what and and you know what works for you. Um, so let's get back into this a little bit here, and I'm gonna take my palette knife and mix up. I'm gonna grab some of this bismuth yellow, pull that over here with some of the phthalo. Uh, sorry, not phthalo, some of the cerulean. I'm gonna get a different variation of green. So the reason I'm looking at this right now and I'm thinking about you know how how can I get a lot of different variations of green well when you are painting and i don't know what your backgrounds are i'm going to get a little deeper with uh, the uh say yeah there we go gonna get a little deeper with that and bring a little bit of the yellow into it just grab that yeah, there we go it's getting a, yeah it's getting a nice deep let's get a nice deep rich green that's got a bluish 
undertone to it. Um, I don't know what your backgrounds are. Um, so l let's just assume for a moment, if anybody on the, on the, you know, event here today is a little bit newer to, uh, to painting. I think sometimes things can get really overwhelming very, very quick. And I'm going to lay some of the screen over this right here. So I'm just going to drag it over top. So some of that's still gonna show through. Okay, so look look at this right here. This is what I like about little variations. I have some of that violet showing through. There's a little bit of the pink showing through. So it's not just a massive green. Listen, that might change a little bit more as we continue to paint here. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know. That's the beauty of the process. It's not paint by numbers. So I don't know how that's gonna change. And I like, I like the uncertainty of things like that, but I'm just dragging this over the top. Still a little wet underneath there. That's okay though. Just I'm looking for variation. And also some of this is getting pulled up into this. So we're getting an overlap there. So again, that might that might change a little bit. So each step I take is like I'm building up a little. So um back to the canvas. If you're on the site, there's there's 40 different sizes in there. So whether you want, you know, a large size. Whether you want something moderate like this, you know, this, well, nine by twelve is pretty small. Um, something like that. A uh, little five by seven is what I just showed you. Just pulling this down here, I'm gonna a little little variation. I'm gonna make some lighter areas within that. Just a little bit of variation. Um, you've got all those different sizes in the traditional and in the deep edge. There's also rolls of canvas. So let me clean off my brush here. Um, the rolls that you can buy, and I don't know what, again, don't know what you all like to do. I like to make really funky, weird sizes sometimes um, that are different than what you might, you know, what you might get with a standard canvas size, like a nine by 12, eight by 10, five by seven. Um, so the canvas roll comes in 71 inches by six yards. So what, 18 feet? Uh, and what is that, about six and a half feet or so? Uh, five, well, five feet is what, 60? So that's about five feet, 11 inches wide by about 18 feet long. Uh, and that enables me to have um, have some fun with, I like painting like little funky skinny shapes sometimes and doing little panoramas. And I'm taking a mixture here of both the um, the uh, light bismuth yellow, the light phthalo green, and a little bit of that azo yellow. Look at how nice and strong that color is. That's a pr that's well, that's pretty. I like that. That's what I respond to, folks. That's what I mean when I say I don't come into the studio and think about painting so much. I come in and say, can I make pretty colors that I like and that I want to. Yeah, look at that. Look at look at that. Look at that. Wow, that's ah, oh, that's what I like about painting. I like moments. If you heard me in my studio here sometimes, <laughs> painting by myself, I'm in here and I'm going, "Ooh, that's not you." Know, I've I've had sometimes it's funny. You know, my wife was uh coming out here. It was last Saturday. I was painting in here. I really had the music going, and uh, quite loud, which is often what's happening when I'm painting. And I was making marks like this. And uh, she came in and I, I didn't know she was there. And I was like, oh, again. And she, she's like, hey, uh, I just want to let you know I'm here. <laughs> and she's like, you having a good time? I'm like, yeah, look at this. This is working. This is the kind of excitement level I get. Like that just jumps and it sings to me. And so you can see, let's just before I cover anything up there, look at what I originally had down. At the time, that was reading as the brightest area. That was fine. That was okay. And it was blocking out that space and was helping me understand the space. But now we drag some of this over top and I'm just doing this with the palette knife. And we can let some of that come through. Again, I don't know, we, we might cover up some of that. I'm not 100% I'm not, I'm not sure at this moment. But I, what I try to do with a canvas is I, and it's, it's not there at the moment, it, it sort of is. And I just I want to come back face to face here to, to, to kind of make this point because it's something that this resonated with me when I was a student in uh, I think it was in grad school. I had a professor say to me, I want he was talking to the whole class, not just me. He said, I want your paintings to always feel complete. And I that was one of those things that I, I think I don't think it was just me. 
we all sort of had quizzical looks on our face. Like, what do you mean? Well, you want them to always be complete. And he said, I don't want you to finish a little section and then finish the next section and finish the next section and then hope it all works together. I want you to work all over at the same time, as much as you can, right? This is, a, this is a little bit of a sweeping generalization, but get color down everywhere, get shape down everywhere. So you can start to make adjustments and you can say, ah, I can see how that looks against that, right? You, you know this from anything you've ever done with house painting. You need to take a swatch home and see it against other things to see the relationship, right? You all, you all know that. The color in the store looks so much different when you get it home. So he meant, Get everything down and have a sense of it being complete, not finished. The finished part comes at the end. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense. Just maybe throw it in the chat. If like, yeah, I get it, Jimmy. That resonates with me. And if not, it's my job to explain it in a different way. Let's go back down to our uh So our Diana circuit. has a question. And the question is, besides helping conserve resources, what are the advantages of the recycled canvases, i.e., are they cheaper? Question mark. No, they're at, that's a, that's an excellent question, and I, you know I, I like a question like that because I, who's not on a budget? I am too. No, they're not cheaper. I'll be very very bluntly honest with you. They're not cheaper. Um, it's a technology um, that is newer for us. Now I want to be clear about that though. Waste to wear. If you, go check them out because they're super cool. Um, it's not like it's not. They're 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 cool because. They've been doing this a long time, right? So let me, sorry, let me paint while I'm while I'm talking here, and I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take some of that color that I just had. I'm gonna move it over here because I want to I want a variation of it. So I'm gonna get a little bit of yeah, a little bit of the cerulean, and I'm gonna get a little bit more of my light bismuth yellow and a little bit of the azo yellow. Um, waste aware has been doing this for quite a long time, turning things into, into fabrics. So they, they, they provide the materials so that we can, uh, in our own, in our own factories, make the canvases. Um, so they've been doing this before. So it's, it's, you know, a lot of times when people started talking about this, or when we started talking to, uh, people about the recycled canvas, they say like, yeah, but is it going to last? Is it going to uh, last and, and you know stand the test of time and you know that's where we always say to people waste aware has been doing this a long time so it's not even though the canvas is new and this is the first to market for an art materials brand we don't have to worry about the fact that oh this you know this this is a brand new technology in terms of making a fabric out of this um but i think you know there's there's a number of things when we look at it's not just the canvas but when we look at the stretcher bars uh, here, if you read on the website, um, those are also FSC certified. So if anyone doesn't know, FSC is for, uh, Forest Stewardship uh, Commission. And what they do is they make sure that you're using uh, resources. So you're not using things like uh, hardwoods that, that, that take a long time to regrow. We're, we're using uh, a wood that will grow at a faster rate so that you're not deforesting, that you're being responsible with the materials that you're using. Um, so the uh, Forest Stewardship Council, their mission is to really promote environmentally sound and, and very socially responsible, um, you know, responsible use of our resources um, so that they last a long time for future generations. So, you know, to get back to that question, Terry, I, I and, and I'm sorry, whoever it is who, uh, who asked that and just get a little bit lighter here. Um, yeah, your benefit is really about, um, about not using resources and, and, and using up recycled plastic instead of that winding up in a landfill. It's, it's really about that. Um, it's not like the canvas performs any different than a cotton canvas. As, and as a matter of fact, that's, that's absolutely what we didn't want it to do. We didn't want somebody to start to use this and go, well, this isn't functioning how how a canvas is that I'm used to using. Um, it changes the way I work. That's always kind of my key. And I'm going to come over here and take a little bit more white and a little bit of this violet. I'm going to make a pale violet. One of the things when I test products, what's important to me is that they don't inhibit my process. So meaning I have a way I work, which is you know some of what I'm doing 
some of what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to get thicker passages. Notice this. I'm getting some of that, that very pale violet. I'm just laying that on with a palette knife over top right here for some clouds up here. Um, I have my way of working in here. And I want to make sure that when we have a new product like this, it doesn't alter that in a way that doesn't feel good for me anymore. That, that makes me have to work in a way that's not comfortable. So we're always trying when we have a new product like this to make sure that it, it, you know, it meets and is on par, if not better uh, than what we would normally have with a uh, cotton canvas. So it's really about resources. And I'm going to just put a little bit more of that in there. Now, I'm not going to get too, I, I would like to probably get lighter at the top of those clouds right now, um, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that just yet, because again, I kind of want to go with that philosophy of keeping this whole thing complete. And I think I really need to get some variation down here. Um, I do want to show you something though with a palette knife. Well, I want to show you something I did with a palette knife and I'm going to grab this painting. This is a new one. Um, when you look at this painting, uh, I like, uh, listen, I don't always use a palette knife. I don't use it exclusively. I'm using the brush in here too, but I do like the physicality of paint. If we go back for one second and I grab this other canvas over here and I show you, you know, 1995 working over here on the right compared to this, this painting was made last Saturday. Um, I like to try to simplify form as much as possible to sort of get it to be semi abstract, but for you still to be able to read it for you still to be able to understand this as skies, as trees, as a road, as you know, this was a traffic light in the distance. This was this was this was done at at five seventeen. What was it? Yeah, five a.m. in the morning. Uh, I didn't do it then. I sh I shot the I I, I was out I'm on a walk. I shot the reference photo. But the reason I tell you this is because I was getting very 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 thick with that using the palette knife. But then what I did is I mixed up a dark color, and then I just dragged it with the edge there. So the edge helped me get that little power line in there. And I don't think. Without seeing that, a lot of people would think um, that you could do that with a palette knife. It's not a fine little brush. I'll show you another very, very similar painting if I reach across here. Um, this was another one. We get a little closer here. Uh, obviously, you can see this pine and you can see the uh, same street view, but a different vantage point. You can see the telephone poles. And then I'm just dragging with the edge. Uh, Diana Quinn says, I like to scrape and scrub into the canvas with the paint. Can you still do that with these? Yeah, great question. Absolutely, you, you can. Um, you know, and that's that's my, you know, that's my whole thing with using the palette knife today, even though it is something I always use. I like to get in there and dig and push. And I, you know, when I first started using, I'll tell you sort of a little anecdotal story about the um, about the canvas. When we first, uh, when I was first testing these, I wasn't the only person to test, but when I, when I first started doing it, I was sent some samples and I can just squeeze out some more paint using a palette knife. will go through some paint when, uh, when I was sent the canvases and they were prototypes. So it was this canvas, it was these stretchers, but there were no labels. There were, there was nothing like that. Right. So I had a bunch of these in my studio and I was testing some and part of the testing was doing exactly what I think of that was Diana asked, just scraping, pushing, scrubbing, trying to be rougher than I normally uh, would with it. Okay, so I'm doing that. But then, uh, and that's sort of um, objective testing. Then I needed to do some subjective testing, meaning I needed to just say to myself, I, I just need to make a painting. Um, so I would grab a canvas and I would just make a painting, right? Not, not think about doing anything particular. Just, I want to make sure it doesn't impede my process. Okay. So that's fine. Then I got a commission and I had this painting I needed to do. I had a, about a month to do it and I had to ship it over to, uh, UK, somebody who contacted me from the UK. And I didn't realize until I was done and I turned it over. I had written on the back so I knew what was what. Uh, I had written that it was the recycled canvas. And I went, oh, this was a test. Like I, this was the, this was a test camp. I didn't know that I was 
that's what I had grabbed. I, I'm just grabbing things in the studio because I wanted to get started on this thing. And that was really nice because I wasn't thinking about the process of testing. I didn't notice any difference whatsoever. And uh, everything held up with it really, really well. And you might ask, and, and I think it'd be a fair question. I'm, I'm going to say it in case you hadn't thought of it. You might say, well, Jimmy, okay, that's fine. So you work on a painting for a month, whatever, and you send it off. And I certainly haven't heard anything from the the client about any issues with it. But like, how do you know there's no issues with it? Um, we have uh, a lab in Le Mans. And I'm just getting lighter here. Let's just show you this. That, before I tell you about the, the lab in Le Mans, um, when I was showing you this painting here and I was talking about the, the power lines, this is what I would do. Now, I don't need a I don't need an edge this 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 thin. But what I would do is I would grab my color. And then just kind of get just the edge, just the edge like that. And I just kind of. Just get some on the edge and. Look at. Look at that fine little line that I can get with that. That'd be like a brush with like two hairs on it kind of thing. So if you if you are doing something that is a bit thicker like this, which is not right or wrong. Listen, if you if you have a different style, you know, if, if you look at things and you say, nah, Jimmy, I'm more back in this camp where you used to be. I, this is this is more the kind of thing I do. Then great. It's not right, wrong. It's just different. And that's what makes us really fun, right? As people, as human beings, as artists. But. I do want to let you know that if you are doing things, you can get tiny marks like that, right? You can make that mark. So you could make little reeds and stuff with the edge of a palette knife. It's possible to do those tiny, tiny little things. Um, so that can be a, a really sort of fun uh, thing. Back to the lab here. Okay, so we have a lab in Le Mans. And we have our chemist there. And I, I'm fortunate enough to get to really speak with them and pick their brains about things. So, so what they did is they took the canvas and they put it in what's called a Q sun machine. So a Q sun machine is something that I've talked a, a lot about in uh, other demos. It is, and I'm just getting, a, I'm getting a lighter yellow green down here. So I just want you to show, look at the variation now down here. Lots of different greens going on down here. Lots of different variation. Um, Q Sun Machine has Z, a xenon uh, uh, gas in it. It's like a xenon chamber. And what it does, it's used in other industries to test light fastness. So we will put colors in there and we will test that they will withstand the rigors of being assaulted with UV light. So the same thing was done with the canvas. And they put it in there for 300 hours of testing. And 300 hours of testing will mimic 100 hours, uh, sorry, 100 hours. It'll mimic 100 years of hanging in a space in your home, in a museum, in a gallery, and something like that. Um, and we wanna make sure that there's no degradation, there's no change, there's no color, there's no tension issues. So let's just look at that right there. You know, this is, let's raise you up actually, so you get a slightly better, yeah, there we go. Let's get a little bigger view here. Right, I like where that's going right there. I, I feel good about that. but. Here's one of the things that I do, you know, I'm talking to you guys a lot about, so I'm actually not thinking as much as I normally would when I'm doing this. And there's something kind of nice about that because I can overthink. I don't know about you guys. I'm guessing you might be the same way. Oh, but what I'm noticing now, I've got quite a bit going on down here. I've kind of gone and dealt with a second layer here and here. Here and here a bit, but I think I need to build those more. I also feel like back here, I need to make sense of this back here. And I feel like that I want that to be sort of a soft, uh, pale color back there because it's a mountain receding into the space. And remember, if we come back to my image and I really, really blow that up for you, right? That's a, that's a really pale, pale colored back there. Now, it's mountains in the background. It, it looks like a pale green to me, right? I, I'm going to guess you might agree to that as well. Um, it doesn't look warm compared to the warmth of what we have happening right here. So I know it's pale. I know it's light, but not as light as the sky. It can't be that. But my thing when I look at it, I don't know that I want to make it green. And the reason I say that is because I, I, want it, I don't want it to get lost in everything else that's happening right here. I don't want that to happen. So 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a deeper violet. I'm going to actually, I have some violet here still, but I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of my quinacridone crimson. Now I've got a pretty deep violet there and I'm going to take some white. And what I want to do is I want to get a pale enough violet. And sometimes you can do this. You can just hold it right up to what you're doing, right? That's not bad, right? No, no. Okay. So look at, look at, here's what I'm trying to look at folks when I, when I do this and you can do the same here. Squint your eyes is, is what I have on the palette knife darker than, than what's there. I, I think yes. Right. I think it's darker but not a huge amount darker. Um, it's going to allow this area to be darker than here. And right now, I think this is too similar. I don't think there's enough separation between here and here. So I, I'm going to go with that. That was kind of my first, let's just put some down and see. And sometimes you need, to, you need to have that relationship right here and you need to put that down. Let's just put a little down. That's not bad. I like that. It, it, it sort of plays nicely against this color, which is a very yellow green for almost kind of an acidic green. And I, I may tone it down just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit like that. And I'm gonna just drag it down in these areas too. Now, if I want, I can come back in with the brush again, making sure my brush is cleaned off and I did clean it off last time. So I can pull that down in here a little bit. And then we can get a little better sense. Now I still like, I still like those little, those little magenta bits sticking out there. Um, you might want to clean up an edge like that. Okay, you, you might be tempted to do that. I might clean it up. I'm not going to do it right now, though. I'm not going to, because I like to try to reserve those little kind of concepts until the very end of a painting. Because it's listen, it's very simple to either take what I the color I have here and clean up the edge that way, or take what I have here and clean up the edge that way. But when it gets down to it, it's barely anything. It's just a few little a few little marks. It's just what you call tickle in the canvas, basically. And I don't wanna do that at this stage. I still wanna work in a very general to specific kind of mode. And I, and I also want to, if I look at my sketch too, I drag some of this down over here. I wanna cover up some of what's going on here. Some of what's going on back over here. So I'm gonna clean off my brush. And I know this is wet. So if I drag my brush into it, I'm probably gonna mix up some colors and I might, if I get a green and a violet together, Eh, they're probably gonna get super, super muddy. So that's where I'll come back in with my palette knife. And I might use a smaller one this time, right? I might use something like this that can help me get into little uh, little areas. So let's just try that. And I'm gonna take, watch this. I'm gonna take, we haven't done anything with this orange. I'm gonna take this over here. That's a bold color, right? That's a bold, bold color. But I'm gonna take, and. Okay, I, now I just wanna show you this. I'm doing this a little bit on intuition here. There's a lot of, one of the things that I suggest that you do, let's do this, let's come back face to face. I like to come face to face to you. Face to face, you know, as much as Zoom can, can do face to face, right? But you see my face now. So I wanna make this point because I think it's really important. I'm always saying, let's bring that back down out of the way. I'm always saying in um, in demonstrations or, back when I was a college professor as well, I'm always encouraging play. In our studio, again, this is my studio, in our studio up at our Liquitex offices, I put a sign on the studio door and it said, art is serious business, but art is pure play, right? Art is serious business, but art is pure play. Just because we're enjoying what we're doing in our own respective studios, doesn't mean we're not working, right? It's work sometimes to make a painting. It, it, it takes a lot of critical thinking and, and, and adjustments and all sorts of things like that. But there's also an element of play involved. And I hope that what you will do sometimes is you will take the colors on your palette and you will go into your studio and simply play 
with the colors to see what they do. Because I think a lot of times people just take the colors on their palette. They go to a studio, whatever, again, whatever that place is for you. And they say, I, I'm going to make art. And I say, no, 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 no. Why don't you just have an afternoon where you just play with colors, mix colors together that are on your palette that you don't normally mix together or in ratios that you don't normally mix together because that will build your intuitive thinking. Okay, I say that to go back to my overhead view and go back to the orange that we have on there. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of that cadmium, uh, sorry, cadmium, the late, uh, light phthalo uh, green. I'm gonna take a little bit of that cadmium. I'm gonna need some more. I'm just taking a little bit at first. Let's see how much I need. Yeah, there we go. That's just knocking that back. That's giving me a really nice earthy green. I wouldn't call it a sap green. It's not, that's, that's, it's, it's too muted for that. But it's giving me a very, very earthy green. And I really like that. What's happening here, right, is the, the, the red in the orange is, is right, red's complementary color to green. And it's fighting that green. It's, it's, it's knocking that back. Now, I might say, maybe that's a little too much. Maybe just pull a little bit of that yellow back into it. Yeah, that's just a slight variation. I'm not sure if you even pick that up. I see just a slight. Let's go a little bit more. A uh, question yeah. is, how does it stay um, wet on your palate so long? Well, yeah, okay. Excellent question. Um, let me look behind me and tell you a little bit of information about my studio. I'm going to jump off to the side here. Um, it is in my studio right now. I have a thermometer on the uh, wall over there, and it's got the um, it's got my uh, uh, humidity in there. It's sixty eight percent humidity in here right now, um, which I'm not. You know, that sounds a lot, right? I it just sounds like a, I think in the summer, if it was like super super hot out right now, you'd be like, oh my gosh, sixty eight percent humidity. I'd be dripping wet. I'm not. I feel great in here right now. Um, but it's very misty outside right now. It's been soup. I don't know about you guys. New Jersey, we have just had like Seattle proportion rain for the last week. It's been that Ophelia storm. So it's very, very wet outside. It's very humid, but I'm not feeling humid like summer. So it's keeping everything wet on there. Partially, I'm also painting quite thickly. So I have thick amounts on there. Um, I don't have it within reach. I'd have to go dig it out of the other side of the studio, but Liquitex makes what's called a palette wetting spray. So the palette wetting spray is an acrylic polymer medium in mist form. Now, you might say, well, Jimmy, can't, if I want to keep my colors wet, couldn't I just spritz it with water? You could do that. Absolutely, 100%, you could just spritz with some water and do that. Um, what might happen though, is you can tend to thin out the paint too much. So just be careful if you if you do that. Just don't don't go crazy spritzing. You'll thin out the acrylic polymer in the paint. But the um the uh, uh palette wetting spray, palette wetting spray is just that acrylic polymer in a mist form. Let me show you something. You you remind I like the question because it reminded me of something else. Let me go overhead here uh, again. And I want to show you this. I, I I'm I'm happy with I'm happy right now. This makes me happy. <laughs> so I'm looking at this. If I, sorry if I don't pat myself on the back right there. Right now. Um, I think you have to, when something makes you happy when you're making art, you should enjoy it. Um, this is um, matte gel. Now, just to show you, this is an older label. Our, our gel mediums now have this brighter band on here, but they're, they're the same. This one happens to be a satin gel. Um, this is a matte gel. So if I mix this with the color, um, it's going to thicken it up. So let me just show you for a second. Let's make sure I clean this off. You don't want to ever dip into a medium. When I do this, this is, right, look at that. That is basically, that's an acrylic polymer. So that is basically your paint without a pigment, without the colorant in it. And as my colleagues who have joined today know, Dwayne's still on the call, he'll know this. I always say, and I always keep repeating it, Dwayne, because pigment is the most expensive component that's in the paint. So here we've got our heavy body color, that's quinacridone crimson. Here we've got our medium, 
And this is this very thick, thick gel here. So I can take a gel medium and I can put that up. Oh boy, I barely have any room here anymore. This is a different thing too, you know, guys, when, when I'm, when I'm, or folks, when I'm working in my studio by myself, I've, I've kind of got a bigger palette of because I'm spread out all over the place, but I can put that down on my surface and then I can mix color with that. So I'm going to put, this is going to mix with a little green that just happens to be over here, but that, that's okay. I don't care about the color. It's, I just care about the illustration of what we're doing here. Now, a large volume of that is going to lighten the color a bit, but actually that, that cadmium free orange is a really bold, bright orange. So it's not changing it much at all, actually. So, what I've done there, if you want to paint thick, like, hey, I'll listen, I'm just squeezing a lot out of the tube, right? I'm just really kind of going for it with product I have around the studio. But if you want to thicken up your paint, because you, you do like to work thick like this, having a gel medium means that you are, yes, there's, there's a cost to it, of, of course, right? But a, a gel without like if we had the jar of paint over here, right? That that has your pigment in it. So the same size jar of paint is going to be more expensive than the medium, which doesn't have the colorant in it. So a medium can be a great way to extend, to alter, to change the viscosity, to change what you're doing with your paint uh, to suit your needs. So you might say, hey, hey Jimmy, I wanna make the paint thicker like you just did down here but you know what? I don't want it to be matte. I don't, I don't prefer a matte sheen. I prefer a satin sheen. So great. You can do the same thing. Get a satin sheen. We also, I don't have it within reach here, um, but we also have a gloss one as well. So if you want to get more glossy than the paint will normally allow you to do, um, you can do that. Um, let's get back to the painting here for a second. Um, when we're, when we're looking at this painting right here and what I suggest you do as you as you paint, I'd suggest that every I'm going to suggest you set up a timer right now. I, I don't say this. What's the best way to say this to you? I don't say this to you to dictate things, right? You need to work how you work and at the pace you work. But if you are like me, if you're somebody who can get too caught up in one area too easily, or maybe you can get lost in the details. It's a good idea to just set a timer for maybe 15 minutes. And I don't mean you stop painting then. I'm just saying that maybe what happens at that point is that you go, oh, oh, it's a reminder. Just let's do this. Let's set the palette knife down for a second. Let's just back off for one second. And then let me assess what I've done. So let me ask questions about my painting. Is is this area still the lightest area or did I, because that, remember that's what we said. I said, I wanted that to be the lightest area. Did it get too dark? Did something get too saturated when I wanted it a little bit more dull? Did something get too dark when I wanted it a little bit lighter? Maybe, maybe, we don't know. And sometimes we get so caught up in working, 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 working. It's the old, you know, it's the old, we can't see the forest for the trees. So if you set a little timer for yourself like that, you may, you may find that that gives you just a little bit of a signal, a little bit of a signal to just back off a second. And I'm using some of this muted tone up here. That, that was that cadmium orange. I'm gonna actually come into here a little bit. Just looking for variation. You know, this is not something in the next 15 minutes I'm gonna, I'm gonna call finished, but I'm gonna, like my old grad school professor, I'm gonna call it complete. I'm gonna call it, you know, something where I've worked on everything. And then I can assess because when I'm in the studio here, you know, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking about, you know, uh, things I want to share that I think will help you paint better. It's just, it's just me, right? It's just me in the studio. So just show you that just another variation of green right there. I'm really trying to see how how much can I do that? If, if you don't get in your own studio and play with your materials, what, what can end up happening is you make one green, let's say that, and you just simply start making lighter and darker variations of it. And it's just a series of lights and darks of the same thing. I, I hope that what you will do 
is going to um, is 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 go outside when you're out for a walk. This is what I do. I I make mental notes. Well, sometimes I take my sketchbook with me and I make little notes about you know what I see in the surrounding areas. Do I see you know what what are the shapes I see? You know what are the colors that I see? Do I see blue within that green? Now, what do I do with that? I see somebody just asked, curious what I'll do with the violet up there. I am too. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I am too. I don't always have a, 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 I have, I have ideas about what I'm doing. Um, but honestly, I'm not always 100% sure myself. It's an assessment along the way. I'm taking a little bit of, some of this green I have up here, mix it in with that violet. It's going to dull that down a little bit. It's going to gray that out a little bit. I don't know if I want to gray that out, though. Ah, but it's a little bit of variation there. Yeah, let's maybe go with it. Let's try it. It's, it's, it, it's only paint, folks. It's only paint. So, you know, I look at this. I can always cover an area. I can always paint over an area i can always do those things so i'm never stuck so you know yeah yeah that's okay so that's kind of yeah i kind of like those little variations i kind of like that and you, you know when you start doing something like that then you say to yourself well okay 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 hold on Hold on. Wait a minute there. Maybe I'm on to something. I did that. What if I what if I take what I was just doing and go a little bit more cerulean blue? A little bit more of that. And then as that hill sort of comes down. Breaking up the space. Yeah, breaking up the space. It's sort of like if I go back, I'll just lean that there for a second. If I go back to this. It's just a road right around the corner from my house. I could I could go out my studio and throw a baseball and hit this road. That's how close it is. But it's a road, just like there's roads in your town. It's a bunch of blacktop. So if we look at it, we're going to go, well, it's black. Uh, you know, and then people end up painting roads that are just a series of grays. But I looked at it and said, ah, that light is really hitting the surface of that road. And it's it's hitting in this reflection because it was a little misty out, I should say, that day. So it's the road was a little bit wet. And it radiated out to the darker edges here. So if I show you this, this goes from yellow to orange to red to sort of a, a burnt orange. There's some blue in there. There's some violet. Over here, I, I can't even tell you, folks. I don't even know. Oh, Diana, thank you so much. Um, there was something going on. I think there was a, a house light, but it was kind of dim over here and it threw like a violet down there. So you can see that's just a quick slash with my, just quick, real quick, like I, even with the sound effect, just like that. And it just, it picked up some of the other tones that I had on there and gave variations. So, you know, I, I try to say how much variation can I possibly get happening there? I love little nighttime scenes. Well, it's, it's like 5 a.m. in the morning, but it's it's dark out. So I'm going to call it a nighttime scene. I love that. We're just starting to get variation in the sky from pink to blue to gray. I love everything. Oh, I love everything about that. I love, I love, I love enjoying color like that. Um, so yeah, that might be a thing I do is just trying to break up a form because I'm not a painter who, again, this would be fine if you are. I'm not a, you could, you could simply make this a, just a hard geometric shape and another hard geometric shape and not have variety in there. And you could have a very interesting thing that might end up looking like a collage. I don't know. That could, that could be super, super cool. Just like no variation whatsoever within here. Um, that's just not who I am as a painter, um, which is not, again, not right nor wrong. I'm not right. The things I'm doing right now are not the correct things to do. They're not the right things to do. Um, there are things that make me feel good. And I think if you're doing something, if you're working in a manner and it's not bringing you passion, if it's not inspiring you, if you're not enjoying it, then don't do it, right? Do something else, do something, yeah, 
do something else. I'm going to take some of that violet. So, you know, I want to go back to while I, while I, I'm going to mix this violet and I'm going to get a little bit more quinacridone crimson. I'm going to get a little more red violet, I think. And I'm just going to kind of drag that over here. Now, let me pull up the reference photo again here. Um, oh, you know what? I shot so many reference photos in this trip, to be honest with you. There's no wildflowers in this at all. I think it's another one if you look over to the right. Uh, so that's funny. That's funny. My memory is telling me that. But guess what? That's okay if I want to come in here and have a little bit of fun with that. That's really funny. I had no idea that they were, I, I would have swore I was going to show you some purple wildflowers in there, um, but they're not there. But I can come again, break up this space. The, you know, I get very attracted to landscapes because you have a lot of leeway. You can have a lot of fun with them because those flowers could be there. And even just doing this, I, I laid down that violet and then I start to bring other variations on top of that. So in that whole scene, you know, we, we can start to have fun with that and you know, really let ourselves go. And look what's going to happen. Okay, so that violet right there, right, is going to look different over here. Over here, that, that looks a bit, it looks a bit brighter to me. It looks a bit lighter because it's playing off that yellow green right there. Um, so you can really kind of have fun. And you might want to go back and forth. Listen, you might want to come back in with, um, you know, with the brush. So let's, let's grab some of these light areas here. Just come back in here and I might want to pull. Sometimes it's like, um, yeah, I don't know if any of you work in watercolor. I, I love watercolor and gouache. I love it very much. They're really favorite mediums of mine as well. So that's why it's really nice to work for Liquitex and have our sister company, uh, Windsor & Newton, makes a, a great gouache, is that um, sometimes I'll, I'll use dry brush technique. And even though this is wet and this is still a little wet underneath, I'll sort of just drag like see that quick drag that quick drag gives you a, a a hint of like a you know like a petal or something like that so watch again i'll just you know it's kind of a, a light yeah i don't know that i like them all going in that same direction but it's kind of a light touch there and once again now now we're getting all sorts of things playing through here some of this green got dragged over the magenta so that actually looks a little orange there even though i didn't put any orange there and then we've got the deeper i think there needs to be a better transition here but just showing you that we've got this sort of acidic green we've got an orange we've got the magenta we've got the green we've got a little bit of blue here we got a lot of different things going on so i try to look for unity in what i'm doing so there's a unity in a band of what's happening here a band of what's happening here another band another band really a block in another band here there's unifying concepts there but within there things are broken up um you know quite a bit so that can be kind of you know fun to to play around with and let's see while we have time to make a few more a few more marks on here and see about maybe transitioning this Base. Maybe I'll drag some of this down. Yeah, maybe just drag that down. I, I ultimately want whatever's happening here to overlap that, right? Because this is in front of that. So, you know, even if I, dra I drag something down like this, I'll kind of want to come back the other way. Now, the canvas itself, just like, um, you know, I say canvas. I mean, truth be told, Right, because it's made from recycled plastic bottles. I mean, it still looks like a canvas. It still has, yeah, let's get the wheat. Yeah, you can see all that variation right there. It's still got um, that that canvas texture to it. Um, but it's it's uh, it's got a titanium dioxide uh, gesso on there. Uh, so just like you would have on your cotton canvas there too, you've got a flexibility. Also, if you uh, bought a roll of it that was unprimed, you could work on it in, you know, unprimed with with acrylic uh, oil painting, uh, oil paint. You don't want to put down on an unprimed canvas, but you could do that um, with this with uh, acrylic acrylic on an unprimed canvas is going to stain it more. It's going to sink in more because it doesn't have the gesso on top. 
Um, but you can do that. And by the way, um, you know, what I just showed you here before, I'll just bring that back in. Um, you know, I painted on this. This is also the recycled canvas. This time you can see I painted on this bright red ground. So some of the reds that are coming in here are sneaking through. That's the ground again, right? So that's why I wanted, I, I knew from my reference photo that there was this heat and warmth here. And I wanted some of that to kind of show through. I did the same thing with this one here and you can see along the edges, some of that coming through. So you get little dots and little bits of red in here that sneak through little areas sometimes um, that are coming through, but these are both oil paintings. So these are these are both oils. Um, so you don't have a problem with the recycled can, you can. This one's actually not the recycled canvas. This is an old thing I painted over. Um, this one is over here. Um, I've been going through a series where I'm painting over stuff right now lately. Um, because there's so many paintings in here and I look back on um, decades of painting and I tend to, I live with things for quite a while. You know, when I'm making, um, you know, when I'm making paintings, if I have something that doesn't work, like if you have something that doesn't work, I think sometimes we can get very reactionary. We go, ah, oh, that doesn't work, get rid of it, you know, or paint over it immediately. You might do that, right? And you might do that, like I've been painting over some things that I that I painted a, a decade or more ago. You might paint something and then decide two weeks later to paint over it. That's fine. Just don't paint over it the day after that you decide it doesn't work because I don't think you get enough chance to then learn from it because we get we get really fired up don't we when a, when a painting doesn't work we're like oh that thing didn't oh, and we're very critical of ourselves and i think you need to like i always tell my kids hold on take a breath take a breath now slow down it's probably not going to look so bad tomorrow so i like to come back into my studio the next day and go was this as bad as i thought nine times out of ten it's never as bad as i thought it might not be a good painting I like, but I might be able to look at it and say, oh, but I did that nice little thing right there. Let me make a note of that and do more of that the next time. So there's possibilities there. Um, last bit I wanna share with you. Um, when when we're, please do visit the website, um, check out Cheap Joe's, check out, check out liquidtex.com. I get excited about this canvas because like I said, and I probably shouldn't pick up my sweater with paint on my hands, but I think, I'm, I think it's pretty dry. That's made from recycled plastic bottles. I dig that so much. I have a carpet inside my house made from recycled plastic bottles. I like that I can use this canvas now made from recycled plastic bottles and that each one of these things functions in the way that their traditional counterpart would function. Um, and what I tend to try to do in my life now, and believe me, I don't, I, I say this knowing that everybody's in different places uh, in, in their lives. So I don't, I don't take budgets lightly. I, I, I'm an artist. I don't. But I, I tend to try to buy less of poor quality things and spend money on better quality things and things that I know ha have a, sustain a, a, a sustainable edge to them. Um, so, you know, if, if there's a especially important project you're working on or something you're excited about, you know, maybe, maybe that's a chance to try uh, the Recycled Canvas and, and have some fun with it. And let me know what you think about that. And, um, you know, let us know at, at Cheap Joe's too. We're always interested in hearing that. Um, before we sign off, are there any questions? Is there something I can answer right now that you're like, hey, Jimmy, I, I'm just curious about something you said before, something you did, something you mentioned. I am happy to clear that up for you. I'm, a, I'm an open book, so you can ask me anything. Uh, if you want to go off mute and ask a question, please, please do. And if I was that concise and and erudite well then wonderful i don't believe that though but <laughs> uh, but if you have anything or you can dump it in the chat too or, or terry if there's something else that we might have missed i'm uh, i'm happy to i'm happy to do that and i see some thank yous coming in i appreciate that alex thank you so much and diana i thank you uh so much as well and uh, everybody else yeah oh lots of nice thank yous yeah all good all right cool so yeah uh, follow some of those things we saw in the chat if you are on Instagram. Um, and if you have any art materials questions at any point later on and you're on my Instagram, hey, don't worry about it. Ask me a question there. I'm happy to help you out and uh, uh, help you on your journey. Go have fun. Don't be too hard on yourselves. Okay.
See you guys. Be well.